Gregory Keane continues the story from a riverside landing as a speedboat approaches upstream. She's right on time. When I phoned her at a party in the Cunningham Towers, Sherry said she'd be an hour. Listen. I've been here three days and I'm just about fit again. I can't waste any more time, so I told Sherry to get back here. I want her speedboat and I want her car. Oh, here she comes, flashing the light once to get her bearings. Hang on a minute. Right. Give me a hand and up you come. Oh, thanks. Well, everything all right? Yes, I think so. What have we got there in the parcel? It's the Luga and a hundred rounds of nine millimeter something or other. I told you I'd get them for you. Oh, good show. Well done. Any time. Did you see anything more of the police? Mm, neither hide nor here. Any other strangers? Not that I noticed. You're absolutely certain you weren't followed to the boathouse tonight. Well, I don't think so, but... Well, hang it, Keen. I didn't watch out terribly much. Hmm. Well, let's go and get on up to the house. I want to charge this Luger, and then I want to talk to you. Everything under control, Mike? Yeah. Where did you put our car? Twenty, maybe thirty yards further along, Mr. Huberman. He's big bush, the car, she's half in the bush and not showing much. Listen. What? That's yeah, all right. Thought I heard the speedboat coming back. Have you got your gloves on? Mine. Well, put them on and keep them on. How many times do I have to tell you not to leave prints all over the place? Now, pay attention. Sooner or later, the girl will be coming back here to this boathouse. If she has Keen with her, we'll kill them both. We'll put them back in the boat, find something heavy to weigh them with, and move them overboard well out in the river. What do we do with the boat? Tied up here, forget about it. We'll take the girl's car, drive it about to 50 miles in the opposite direction from town, and abandon it. Then we brush our hands together, report to Carlotta, and get back to the business of running the nightshade ring. And about time, too. He's five, Mr. Huberman. But what if this Sherry Reed comes back without Major Keene? What if she's not with anyone? Just her? <laughs> Can't you imagine? We're entertaining her a little while, eh? We'll be very charming and uh, persuasive. We'll assume our most persuasive manners, Guzik. And it shouldn't take long for Miss Reed and ourselves to see eye to eye. She's telling us where to find him. That's very bright of you, yes. She'll tell us where to lay hands on her friend Major Keen. You're... You're leaving her to me, Mr. Huberman? Oh, I think we might indulge you to that extent. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're saying you tell us where Major Keen. we don't hurt you, we don't kill you even. She's telling us, then we kill her just the same, eh, Mr. Huberman? <laughs> what a case history you'd make, Guzik. They could devote a whole chapter to you in one of those books. Maybe I don't understand. Well, don't let it worry you. I offer cigarettes. This weight may be tiresome. But one way or another, I'm not leaving this birdhouse till we've settled our account with Keen. Keep over that coil of rope, will you? Chef might as well make himself comfortable. I'm sorry I had to drag you away from your party, Sherry. What did you do about the crowd? Hang the crowd. I left them to it. How on earth did you get that pistol together again? Hmm? <laughs> There's nothing simpler. Is it all right, Keen? Yes, it's perfect. I doubt if it's ever been fired. Now, we'll just put a drop of oil in here. Mm -hmm. There we are. Right. In with, in with the magazine. Full. And one in the spout. There you are, Sherry. The best small arm there is. Yeah. Now you've got a gun, what are you going to use it on? I'll give you one guess. But not tonight. 
How's the speedboat off for petrol? It's about half full. What about your car? They filled it for me tonight. Sherry, I've been here long enough. You want to take the boat in my car and go off and get yourself killed? No. I want to see a few heads roll, but they're not going to be mine. Nothing doing. You know, you've done a lot for me already. I saved your life, that's about all. Then how about doing a few things more? Look, I've got a vested interest in you. I'm not going to see you throw it away. I'm on my way, Les. There's nothing you can do about it. I can keep you here. Without the boat, you can't get away from the place. Oh, but I have the boat. Not on your life, you haven't. I hate to sound stuffy, keen old boy, but the boat happens to be mine. Sherry, darling, I'm trying to put this as gently as I can. I'm leaving here now, tonight. And I'm using your boat whether you like it or not. What is it? Some highly specialized way of saying thanks? I'll make my thanks when I've cleaned up Felix Huberman and the nightshade ring and seen them hang. Oh, use your head, there's a good girl. I can't go on being Sammy Rice with a murder charge over my head for the rest of my life. And no one can get me off the spot but myself. Surely you can see that. I only know they'll kill you like Brett and Doby and the rest. They'll cut you down without a shred of compunction, Keen. They'll find you lying dead in a back alley gutter. I've had a lot of practice at staying alive, Sherry, and I'm going to keep it up. Oh, you fool, you fool. What are these people to you? Let the police catch them. It shouldn't be just one man's job to stalk and grope and be savaged by a gang of organized criminals. But if I felt like pulling out now, I couldn't. You're safe here for years. I'll never be safe again anywhere. If I sit back and wait, one day I'll turn around and there they'll be. They can't ever give up. I'm the one cove they have to get rid of. And they will. They won't have a chance against them. And that's exactly why I have to fight back. No one can fight him but me. Oh, why do I have to beat my brains out trying to make you understand? This nightshade ring works on its existence. They don't know what it is. I stumbled on it because I came after Bruno Kesselring. If I stand about flat-footed, I'll either hang for murder or be butchered one night when I'm not looking. Keen, I'm pleading with you. Wait just a little longer. Sorry, I can't wait. Wait till Tommy Cutts gets here and you'll have at least one man to back you up. Yes, well, it's four days since you cabled him and there's been no reply. Cuts isn't coming, I have to face it. I'm on my own. Isn't there anything I can say to keep you here? No, Sherry, nothing. I've no choice. I might never see you again. No, oh, you'll see me. No, I'll lose you. I'll sit here and wait for the telephone to ring and it won't ring. I'll listen for the boat coming back. I'll wait for you every night at the landing, but it won't be you. I'll be afraid to turn on the radio because an announcer will say they found a man called Sammy Rice with a knife in his back or his throat cut. I won't let you go. Where are the keys to your car, Sherry? Why do you have to do it? Don't you want to stay alive? That's why I'm going. I intend to stay alive. I love you. Tell me it means something to you. It means a lot. But I'm still going. All right, I give up. You'll need some money. Just wait a moment and I'll see how much I have here. You promise to be back soon and keep me posted on the phone? Of course. Get your coat on then. I'll come down to the landing and see you off. There's no moon. I hope you don't run the boat aground. Well, you better get inside again quickly, Sherry, before you get a cold. I'll try to be back before dawn. If I can't, I'll sleep in the car during the day and I'll see you tomorrow night, just after nightfall. All right. Oh, darling, darling, do try not to take any more risks than you have to. I only want to get my hands on Huberman. What are you doing? Help me down into the boat. Give me a hand. Hmm? I'll start the engine for you. It's tricky sometimes. Oh, good girl. Steady. Uh, there you are. The starter switch is here on the right. You can cast off the line if you like. Right. Well, that sounds healthy enough. Come on, up you come. I said the, the engine's all right, Sherry. I can handle it. Have you cast off? Yes, we're all set. That's all I want to know. Goodbye, Keen. I'll see you sometime. Sherry. Sherry, come back here. Come back here, you little fool. Come back here. You blockhead, a little idiot, Sally! Come, found it! How's the time? That's a watch there, Guzzi. Five minutes, I'll be 11 o'clock. I'm mentally unequipped for waiting about an hour after hour. The devil with this boathouse. Sit on the rope. 
If I get hold of Keen, I'll make a nuisance steam up. Mr. Huberman. What is it? Shh. I'm hearing a boat, maybe. Well, shut up and listen. Is there nothing? Shh. Yeah. Is a boat coming? Yeah, I believe you're right. Keep out of sight. Can you see it yet? Moon's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming this way. A speedboat with only one in it. Is it Keen? Or the girl? <laughs> His good is very good. Now we have one of them. Soon we're having both. You think she's going to like my music car? Huh? It's the girl. Ten minutes ago, I'd have liked to wring Sherry's neck. But now I'm in luck. Out on the river, there's a craft of some sort chugging round and round in circles. After prawns, perhaps. I couldn't care less. Well, the fishermen in it don't know yet, but they're going to take me into Sherry Reed's boathouse. And we'll press on towards Huberman from there. What happens at the boathouse? Listen for the next chapter in this story of intrigue, Deadly Nightshade.